So, white people are unable to achieve their goals. There will be no issue, there will be no challenge if anything I want to do, I do it. Do you think there will be a challenge? So, the major challenge is that there are so many things you want to do, but to get yourself to do it is a problem. And you know that if you're able to do, even if it is half of what you want to do, you won't be where you are today. Is that correct? Does that make sense to somebody? How many of us can relate with it? Okay. So, um, do what I, <coughs> I said, and, and you will discover that part of the reason why people are not happy or happy with themselves is they know that I'm supposed to be here, but I am here. That alone can lead to depression. Underachievement leads to depression. So when you are not setting and achieving goals as a human being, you know, it leads to frustration. It makes you frustrated with life. It makes you frustrated with yourself. So it's very important that we learn this skill. Goal setting is a skill. The ability for you to set a goal and achieve it is a skill. But many people don't think it that way. By the time we are done today, you will see, because we are going to give you tools that will help you. Now, in setting and achieving goals, there are a lot of tools you will need. You will need your pen and your paper. Those are your very good friends. You're going to do writing. You will need people. You will need mentors. You will need accountability partners. I'm just giving you. You will need knowledge. These are things that if you don't put all these things together, goal, achieving goals becomes, you know, uh, very far from you. And once you are not achieving your goals, you are not growing, right? If you are not achieving your goals, you are not growing. And I'm sure that you are not satisfied with where you are. How many people are satisfied with where they are? I am not. So um, there is really a need to really get this essential skill of setting a goal and achieving it. There is a process. There is a way. It doesn't just happen. Achievers, achievers don't just become achievers. There is a process of achievement that if anybody uses that process, the person will become an achiever. And I'm hoping that you have been here today, that in 2021, if you are able to follow this process and use all these tools that are going to be shown to you and the knowledge we will share, you will be able to achieve a lot of your goals. Okay. Um, yeah. Bad habits. A lot of bad habits we have. And until those habits change, it will be difficult for you to achieve goals. There are some habits that are anti-goal achievement. We we'll want to identify those habits in our lives first. We need to deal with those demons and those devils first before we start setting goals. Don't you guys think so? Yeah, you want to identify. Some of us, we have bad habits. I, I don't want to embarrass anybody, you know, but we all, we all have it. Not keeping to time, procrastination, not relating with people, you know, in form of complexes, in form of attitudes. So you can't be a great achiever if you don't deal with these things. So you have to do this exercise. Basically, the way to get yourself to think is to ask yourself questions. There's one of the videos I did. I said, the best person to advise you is you. And how do you advise yourself? You ask yourself questions. How many of us know the story of the prodigal son? He said he came to his senses. All the advice of the father didn't make sense. He left home against the, the advice of his father, against all sense of reasoning. But when he advised himself, he came back home. So I want you to advise yourself. We'll do this in the next three minutes. And I will leave these questions with you because we can't do much within the time we have. We can only just scratch the surface. But that, that will be good enough. Question one, you want to ask yourself, what bad habits should I stop? List them, as many as you can. List them. You know them. They are not new to you. You know them. List them. So these are the first things you want to deal with. 
before you start setting goals so that you don't go around this, the same pattern of your life of not achieving your goals will not happen. So your mind will be working now. The other thing is, do you believe you can change? That is to stop them. Do you believe? Now that is belief. 90, 90, about 98 percent of our mind. Let me draw if you if this is the mind. Let's put this at 98 percent. 98 percent, if this is the mind. 98 percent of the mind is the subconscious mind. The conscious mind, what you know as conscious mind is what you are conscious of, is just 12 percent. So until we are able to get our subconscious mind to be aligned with the goals we are setting, we will not be able to achieve them. That's why you say, ah, I will do it. Ah, this year, every year, people make New Year resolutions. Every year, ah, I'm not going to smoke again. Ah, this year, in short, I'm going to take first position. In your conscious mind, you are saying it, but subconscious mind is telling you, na lie. You can't. You start saying doubt, things like doubt. So there are a lot of people, they say they have faith. They say it. But their subconscious mind is full of doubt. They will not move any mountain. So we need to work on this subconscious mind. And this subconscious mind takes a lot. It's not something you can change overnight. We need to work on our beliefs. We need to work on the experiences we have had that have made us who we are today. When we deal with those things, we need to reframe and rephrase our minds. When we do those things, then you now set your mind to achievement. So there is a science to achieving anything. A science to achievement, there is a science to achieving any goal. Ask yourself, can I stop this habit? Just write, can I stop? This, these things you list, can, can they be stopped? That's question three. Question number four. If I can't stop, can I stop it on my own? If I can't stop it, do I need someone's help? Now, you might, as you are writing, I think that this thing, like this, this eating too much, I might need to um, consult one of my friends who just knows how to control their appetite. He's an exercise freak. He's doing dieting, you know? So if you are someone who eats too much, if you want to uh, start reframing on your mind, you need to get someone who is on the other extreme, who is a diet person. Maybe he eats once a day, right? You, you eat three. So you, that's, there's one of the ways to change the mind is what they call peer pressure. There's what they call positive peer pressure. So in, that's why when you are setting your goals, you can't do it in isolation. Goal setting cannot be done in isolation. There will be relationships that will enable you to achieve that goals. That, I mean, to achieve those sets of goals. Okay? All those other things, the relationships affect your subconscious mind a lot. But many people don't know. When you are, they say you are an average of the five people you spend most of your time with. Right? You are an average of the five people that you spend the most of your time with. In short, some people went to an extent that your average earning is will be an average of the five people that are, your, are within your network. So these things are being time-tested and they work. The other question you want to ask yourself is, what can happen if I don't stop this habit? If you don't stop this procrastination, you know, see, you've seen what it has cost you. Some people have failed. Some people in the process of procrastination, they've missed interviews that would have ended them a, a super job. So many things. Ask yourself, if I don't stop this thing, what can happen? If I'm not reading my book, right? If you're a student here, if I'm not reading my book, what would happen? You need to ask yourself those questions. When you begin to ask yourself these questions, these things begin to affect your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind begins to look for answers. One of the power of the sub subconscious mind is that it has the power to look for answers. Okay? 
Uh, then list the benefits of stopping those habits. These bad habits that have stopped you. Imagine that you are reading when you should read. You are doing your homework on time. You are going to school on time. Imagine the possibilities. Imagine yourself being on top of your class. Right? So, you need to ask yourself, list the benefits down. These are the things we need to do before we start setting goals. Does continuing this habit ha have any implications towards my long-term and short-term goals? Connect your current behavior with your future. For instance, if I'm a student and I'm not taking my academics seriously, I may not graduate. And this might have a lasting impact on my finances because I may not be able to get the kind of job that would um, enable me to earn enough to meet my needs. We need to ask ourselves these questions. Now imagine you finish with the first class. Imagine I finish with the first class. I am aware of so many scholarship bodies that once you finish with a first class, the potential for you to get a scholarship to go overseas to study is very high. If you don't have first class, don't even apply. So that can be a motivation. So something has to motivate your goal. You need to ask yourself all these questions. You need to imagine that if I continue the way I'm going, I don't get a good job, it will impact my finances, I can't live the life of my dreams, I can't be who I truly want to be. These are the questions we need to ask ourselves, even before we set out to setting the goals. And as you're asking this question, you're already working on your subconscious mind. Um, what am I willing to sacrifice? Everything requires sacrifice. There's no goal you are going to set. Are you ready to pay the price? There's a price for every goal. There's a price for somebody who wants to move the revenue of their business from 2 million to 10 million. It means you're going to do extra work extra hard. It means you're going to do more marketing. It means you'll be ready to do uh, more investment in areas that will generate revenue. Correct? So everything has a price. So are you, what, what are you willing to give up to achieve your goals? So with these questions, uh, we should get ready to do the first set of exercises we will do. So these questions are for you to analyze. I'm telling you, you can't get all the answers now. They are for you to take home and work with. Like I said, this is actually supposed to be a whole day session, setting of goals. It's a whole day session. Everybody should have this. We are going to do an exercise now. This exercise is usually advised that you do it in the morning when your head is cool. Before we set the goal, we need to take inventory of 2020. Ah, 2020 be for you. Sweet? Super? Did you achieve, underachieve, or did you overachieve? If you overachieve, let me see your hands. If you achieved, let me see. Okay. If you underachieved, let me see. All right, we are plenty. Okay. So that will change in 2021. Just follow me. All right. So score yourself. So you just, let me show you what, the, the one I did for myself. In 2021, this was it. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My one was manual. The one I did was manual then. So, um, you see, uh, my life was like Amweba. Does it, this looks like an Amweba, right? It was out of balance, right? You know, and you can see that my greatest, when you do this exercise, it will show you where you need to pay attention to in your life. So I want to see people, that's why you are giving those pencils, to start scoring themselves and connecting the cycles. I would like to see, maybe your own will be finer than my own, better off. But um, you can see, see how it looks. If your own is like, like my own, you know, I would like to see it. So that's the, the exercise I want us to do. Score yourself, and then we can share our stories. Uh, we'll, we'll share our results. So what we are doing is we are taking inventory of 2020. As of December 2020, I mean, for me, now, as of December 2007, career-wise, I was on four. Finances, four. Is that good? Please, we need to tell ourselves the truth. We must face reality. One of the first books my mentor gave me was titled Good to Great. And in that book, one of the things I would tell you is that the first thing you need to do to change your, your lot 
in life or in any situation is to confront brutal facts. Don't play the ostrich. We in this part of the world, we are very religious. People would rather just want to go for an end of the year program and be doing it go better, it go better, it go better. Nobody is trying to think and challenge their thinking and challenge themselves as to why is it that I'm where I am today. So I told myself the truth. I said, guy, in 2007, finances, four over 10. Is that good? Uh, relationship, seven. Spiritual, looks like seven. Service, it looks like six. Recreation, it looks like four. And health-wise, I mean, I was, I was young and full of energy, so I was almost heading towards 10. And then family-wise, I think I was eight. Me and my wife, we, I mean, we still love ourselves. The honey was is still there, you know, so, and it has not depreciated. So, you want to, for those who are married, that's why I say couples should come. So, if your husband scores seven, and you, you are scoring four, we know that there is an imbalance, right? So, the couple have to come together and balance the what? The equation. That's why I recommended that couples should come together. So, my life was a little bit out of balance. And when we go to the next slide, you will see how these things play out. Does, could it be that my finances was affecting my recreation? Eh? You know, recreation is expensive. Nobody when person see road, they go they recreate. Uh -huh. So your own could be like mine. But you will see, you know, how, because I'm, I took you back to 2007 to show you that this is what I have been doing. And the whole essence of mentoring is to share our lives, is to share what we are doing that is working so that others can also do the same. Uh, so, I don't know, but there is a connection. All these things, data, data, hard data tells you a lot of things which many of us want to pretend don't exist. But as long as you're not ready to confront the brutal facts of your life, you cannot make progress. Please, optimism is not fate. Optimism is not, many people are just optimistic and they think that is fate. Anybody? If you are done, let me see your own. Are you done? Okay, let me see how your own looks. Does it look like mine? All right. Some people don't look like apple. Somebody don't look like a diamond. Okay? Good. Very good. Ah, your own is finer than my own. No? Very good. So, have you identified the area of your life you need to pay attention to? If you have identified, let me see. Can you share? Anybody something to share? Where have you identified as an area you need to pay attention to? Yes? Which area? Okay. For, for this man, he needs to look at his education. Yeah, have you seen yours? Where? You are like me. Finance and career. Do you know that there is a connection between finance and career? Oh! You don't know. You will see. By the time we go to the next slide, you will see the connection. If your career is in four... You know your career on final analysis is the is that is, is the goose that lays the golden egg. So if the goose is sick, <laughs> it cannot lay the golden eggs. So my goose was sick. So there is a, so all these things are connected. So this this is like a map. This is like looking at yourself in the mirror. This is where I am. So when we know where we are, then we can do things that will move us to where we want to be. Now, 11 years down the line, I did the same exercise. I'll show you how it looked. 2020. Does that look like me? Is this still looking like an Amweber? Things are looking brighter, right? So when you do this, you document it. You don't throw it away. Because you will use this to tell your story. That it's possible to use these tools and make your life better. Right? Right? Now you can see, and I will now try to, to, to solve all the riddles and tie all the ends together to see how these goals connect. We must always see the goal picture, the whole picture. You know, when we set goals, people just set goals mentally, but the mind is not connected. When you, when you see this, when you are now setting your goals, the way you will set it, you will be setting it from a different frame of mind. So what I've tried to do is to move you from the frame of mind you were to the new frame of mind that will get you ready to set 
goals that you'll be able to accomplish. Are we enjoying the journey so far? So look at my story. Okay, career moved to almost 8.5, right? Where was it before? It was like 4. There is a direct connection between career and finances. My earning increased, definitely. My earning increased. So I knew that when I was on 4, the way to increase my earning will be to develop more skills that and add more value that people will be willing to pay me more. So I had to pay attention to trainings, capacity building, mentoring from people who are experts in the field. The result just tells you what to do. And when you, when you have answered that question, you will be able to know exactly how you are going to set your goals. If we just rush into goal setting, it will just be a mental exercise. So that's why we are doing this first. So you discover that continuously, after, by that time, I'm not sure I'd done my master's. I'd not done, I'd not done my postgraduate. So those were all the things I listed. That look, you will need to do your postgraduate. You will need to uh, learn in your field. These are the key things you need to learn in order for you to earn more. And of course, it played out. I, I worked on them and automatically it reflected on what? On my finances. Okay? And when you have finances, then you can think of recreation. Now, when a person don't chop belly food, when you are hungry, there are so many things you can do. How many of you know the Maslow's Triangle? Maslow's Triangle, see, hunger, poverty, those things, they shut your mind from higher aspirations in life. So now, I can play golf now. Yeah, I play golf now. I am not trying to chill because I have worked on this. So you can see how finances affected recreation. Although I'm not chilling as I want yet. I want to start going to play golf in U.S. and uh, Caribbean islands and maybe go on a cruise. That's the next level of my recreation. So I still need to work on this, that we affect this, that we eventually expand this. Right? Now, you see, why you need to do these things regularly is because as you grow older, things change. So it's possible. And that's why you are... I knew that I, I didn't want to have resources and not be able to enjoy it. So part of my health goal was that, okay, as you are walking, make sure you don't kill yourself. So you can see my health has not changed. I, I, how am I looking? I'm 45. I can work. I can do anything. I can, I can, I mean, I just played uh, the billiards, they call it this morning. I'm healthy. I'm enjoying myself. Because see, when you don't do this kind of a thing, you can now say, ah! Money, this money I will make it. Finish getting all the money, but you have damaged your health. So maybe I can, this cycle can come here, and this health will now be here. The thing no go balance. Somebody say balance. Life should be lived in a state of balance. The state of balance is the state of rest. If you have this spreadsheet, bring it out. So in column A, what do you want? I always tell people. If you don't want anything, life will give you anything. And anything that life will give you, you won't like it. I guarantee you. You must ask yourself what you want. What do you want in your spiritual life? Write it. What do you want in your spiritual life? Write it. What do you want in your health? Write it. What do you want? This life is a market tool. We came to, it's like buying and selling is going on. And so people are just wandering through it. Now, the first goal you will set is you will write the dates. You write the dates that you ask, you, you ask this demand of life. I will show you the date I put the demand on life. That was 2007. I put that demand. This is what I want. And after I did that, you rank according to the importance. What is more important to you? Of all these six goals, if they say it's only one you can do, which one will you do? Yep. If they say it's only two, which two will you do? Do you know what this kind of thing does? It builds your value system. When you set goals without having values driving it, your value system 
All these things are resident in your subconscious mind. That is where the real change happens. So you can't set goals without addressing the issue of value. The value must align with the goals. If not, it will never happen. Right? So I prioritized. I will give you, so I did all my own I did, I will share with you, I'm sharing with you my, my life story. So, this was 23rd of November 2007. And I was demanding what I wanted in terms of my education. I said, I will not just have a BSc, I will have a master's. I will not just have a master's, I will have a master's in business administration. Although I'm changing my mind, but I've accomplished two-thirds of this. My master's, I was able to do my master's. That's mental and educational. And in importance, it wasn't the first. What was the first in importance? How many people can see it here? Eh? Spiritual. So it's no wonder I'm a pastor. Spiritual and ethical. And you can see how I wrote it. One line, something I can never forget. Spiritual, be more like Christ. No story. Not to be a pastor, just to be more like Christ. That was the goal. So that's the journey. And you could see that, okay, Mr. Noel, if it's only one of these goals, let's say we want to take away five, I'll say, okay, take the rest. This spiritual one, let me face it. You understand? So that, you must, these are the real things that help, that, these are the things that really drive us. And if we don't answer these questions, you know, and you will see that the second thing for me was not career. The second thing was my family and my home. And what I wanted in that area was to raise a godly family. Very simple. My wife, a virtuous woman, and children that will speak with the enemies at the gates. That was my second priority. So that's the next exercise you would do. So do that quickly. Identify where you have issues, Shao. My own then was finance, career. How many of you have set goals like this before? You went to a goal setting session and you went through this process. Anybody? Something like this also. So what I'm telling you is that what I'm sharing is not new. It's a process and it works. Living on a healthy diet, having regular exercise. And so when all these things enter your mind, the way you live is different. These are the things we need to do first. As we set goals. Okay. So having said that, having done that, this prepares you now to set your goals. You don't set goals in isolation. You are setting goals. You don't have a mentor. You don't have somebody holding you accountable. It's a lie. It's a piece of paper. You will soon throw it away. You don't have a system that is set in place to where you will give feedback, get feedback. You are joking. And that's one of the reasons NWN was formed. To create a platform to hold you accountable for your goals. Our three pillars, networking, accountability, is key. And this is where a lot of young people don't, this is what they don't really like. They want to be free. But I keep telling people that unlimited freedom will lead to slavery. You will become a slave at the end of the day. The way you want freedom, if it's given to you like that, you will be like the prodigal son. <laughs> he wanted freedom yeah. from his fathers. Don't do this. Don't do that. Go here. Uh -uh. Yeah, I want to give me my fear of inheritance. It will only lead to more bondage. Right? So that's why the, the platform was, was formed, to hold you accountable. So a journal has been given to you. How many of us have it? If you are among the early birds, you should have this journal. So all your goal setting, everything is already packaged here. You can walk through and with it uh, when you get home. Okay? So you have all that here. And then, um, key thing, this one is just for from now till March. So in March, when is the first quarter in? Is it March? In March, we'll have another get-together like this in the NWN community where the things you are writing today will you will come and report yourself to us. That's why we didn't do more than much. One man said something. He said that people that make resolution, that resolutions don't work. 
that by February, the resolution will start having K-leg. And by March, enthusiasm is gone. That what people need is clarity. Clarity of the mind. When you are very clear on what you want to do, your mind will rise up to it. But when your mind is hazy, that's why we write goals down. It's just to give clarity. It's vision. You cannot have anything that you cannot see. So the first step in ambitioning anything is to put it down on paper. It, the, the mind will take it up from there and start, you know, looking for ways to achieve. The mind is designed to achieve. Yeah? John Kennedy said 10 years from now, in this decade, very precise, very simple statement. In this decade, I think it was 19, about 1960 or 62, I can't remember now. America was going to take a man to the moon. And really, by about 1969 or so, just a statement, that was the vision, that was clear. It was not ambiguous. In this decade, and you can see how I tried to put this thing. One line, something that will just register on your mind that you can't forget. You will just, you will just see yourself going into action. Okay? So, um, anybody done? Those of you who have the journal, there's a place for you to commit. You need to have a partner. You need to have somebody that, okay, you are my witness. Imagine we are buying property of 25 million. Any investment you are doing that is more than 2 million, even when you pay house rent, you have witness. You understand? Your life is more than all those millions. Though. So if you take your life that seriously, you need to hold, make yourself accountable to somebody on your goals. Else, you waste a lot of time and resources. So make this commitment. You can snap it and even send to whoever it is you want to be uh, your mentor. But in NWN, mentors are readily available for you. But in case you already have somebody, take a screenshot. Tell him that today I'm doing my goal setting for 2021. These are the things I plan to do. I just want to send it to you to hold me accountable. And when you send this to somebody, you say, this guy knows what he's doing. He's purposeful. Okay? So you need to work on that commitment. Commit yourself. You see? You see this kind of thing? I, Noel Abdullahi, in the presence of Lucy, Noel Abdullahi, make this commitment to be intentional about my life and my goals. Make choices that will take me closer to my long-term goal on the long run and glorify God through my choices. When you make that kind of statement, that affects your subconscious mind. Have you heard of affirmations? Confessions. That's why we make, in the Christians, we call it confession. The people in the world, they call it affirmation. You are affirming. You are saying what you want. Right? So life gives to you what you want. So the way this goal has been designed, the way you're in your journal is that it will ask you targeted questions that will affect your subconscious mind. So that's why we didn't just say, what are your goals? No. What are your goals? What is the target date? When you give the mind a date, the mind, your subconscious mind begins to work. I don't know how many of us have said, uh, if, like when I'm traveling, sometimes if I'm sleeping normally, no journey, I can sleep till like 8 p.m., I mean 8 a.m. or 6, especially when I know it's Saturday. For instance, work days I wake four. But Saturdays I sleep till like eight. I discovered that to get up by five or six on Saturday, my house is it's, 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 it's a big fight. What's happening? Your subconscious mind captured it. When you say, I want to fight a giant, your subconscious mind captures it and it begins to release adrenaline and all the necessary ingredients that your body will require to fight the giant. The real power is in the mind. I tell people, you work with your mind, not with your hands. The richest of men are those who work with their mind, not with your hands. Hands is for the lower level. So we must be able to know how to program our minds. What we are doing now, we are programming our minds. You call it writing of goals, but we are actually programming our minds. We are giving our mind instructions. We are giving it, telling it what to do. We are telling it what we want. And the mind will answer you. So the other thing that you see in your journal, any goal you set and it does not, you don't have it, 
it and it does not enter into your schedule, your daily schedule. Forget it. You can't affect. You can't achieve it. So you must narrow that goal and bring it into your time. Oh. There is a, a sample of a goal I said that I would have loved to share, but I don't have it here. So, for instance, I said, I want to, long-term goal, I want to invest 1.2 million in property every year. Dollars. dollars. <laughs> yes, 1.2 million property in dollars, right? Uh, then, let me just use that finance. I know finance is something. So, my target date will be at least by the end of 2021, right? Then, uh, to reach my goal, what will I need to do? Ha. I will need to meet people that understand property in dollars, not in Naira, because it's a different ball game. I will need to build my capacity, possibly read a book about property investments. I will need to um, build funds, gather money, Start building the money because I'm saying I want to invest 1.2 million. So I will say, okay, in a year, there are 12 months. So if I want to gather 1.2 million by in six months, I divide it by six. Every year, divide 1.2 million divided by six. How much is that? $200,000 $200, every month because I want to achieve it between now and between January and June. So that's it. By the time you capture your goal like that, it's a different ball game. And you can even bring it at that two million. That is like, is it uh, 200,000? That is monthly. You can break it down into days. So, okay, every day, 200,000, 20 working days. Okay, uh, $200,000 divided by 20. You have 20 working days, right? When you divide $200,000 by 20, what do you get? 10,000. So I need to make $10,000 every day. Eh, Somebody is laughing. When you break it down like that, your mind, this thing will capture it. This is what Noah wants to do. Oh, yeah, oh, ideas start happening. It's an energy. Ideas start happening. And of course, when you are spiritual in Christ, you now have, it's, not, it's like a catalyst. You now have a helper. So one key skill you must know in setting your goals is you must learn flexibility. What do I call it? Adaptability. When things change, react quickly. Don't respond. There is a difference between reacting and respond. Let me show you reaction. When that buzz is, oh God, God, and negative emotions start welling up for nothing. When the boss stops, say, okay, what do we do? We look for alternatives. So you need to think and have alternatives for all the goals you are setting. This 200,000, what if I, before you know it, you plan to save 200,000, they now sack you from your job in January, got one letter. Ah! So what does that mean? Does it mean we have come to the end of the road? No. It's normal. It's just for, look at 2020. Everybody came with plans. COVID-19 came, disrupted everything. Does it mean we should close? No. So in setting your goals, Make provision. There will be there will be barriers to cross, right? And then, um, why is this goal worth working for? All the whys, all these things affect the cops. All these questions will affect your subconscious mind. How will I know when I have accomplished my goal? Now, if you saw my picture, you saw me. I took my two daughters and held them. I said, okay, if me, I want to fail, eh, I want to suffer. But these children, for their sake, eh, this thing got to work. There must be something that will motivate you. See this picture. There must be a motivation. So snap pictures of where you are. Snap pictures of where you want to be. At this time, it was not easy. So I carried them. Say, so you, if you want to sink, you can sink alone. But these two, make sure you put something in place that life can be better for them. That's a big motivation for a father or a mother to give their best in anything they are doing.